You know what I love? Cars. I like big ones, I like small ones, I like fast ones, I like slow ones, and I really like cars that can do this. Nice. And you know what I also like? Video games, and in particular, racing games. Racing games are some of the first video games I've ever played, and as for many of you the same. And like many of you, the first racing game franchise that I was ever exposed to was... Gran Turismo is a franchise published by Sony Interactive Entertainment and designed by Kazunori Yamauchi in 1997. The game took 5 years to create, and of those 5 years, Yamauchi has said that there didn't seem to be an end to development. This was because of the fact that Yamauchi and his team were also developing Mortal Kombat Grand Prix, released in 1994, but Gran Turismo began development in 1992. Needless to say, this put a huge workload on him and his team, with him estimating he was only home 4 days a year. We went across the Pacific to give PlayStation Underground members a sneak peek. Finding the development team wasn't hard. Most of the members barely get out of the office. Many have been working on this title exclusively for two to three years. Compared to others, I get to go home more often. Although in most cases, I just go there to take a shower. But luckily for him and his team, their work would not be in vain because Gran Turismo would release to spectacular reception, publicly and critically, with the game should be a total of 10.85 million copies worldwide. The game went on to win the best driving and the best graphics according to PlayStation Official Magazine. And in 1999, the Next Generation Magazine ranked it at number 15 and top 50 best games of all time. And from there, the franchise went on to spawn six different titles, another one coming up as of this 2022. But now that we have covered a brief history of the franchise, let's jump to the most recent games as of this video. Gran Turismo 6, released in October of 2017, releasing like its predecessors to World Reception. The game focusing now on an online competitive racing, and I'll talk about this a little later on in the video, but before I get to that, I want to talk about things in the game I actually enjoy. You pick up your palette knife and then work that into meat. Give your meat a good old rub. That's it. Nice and hot. Hot and spicy meat. <laughs> yeah, boy. First off, are the visuals are extremely good. Some of the best I've seen in the franchise. Uh, the visuals look clean, nice, and crisp. And I don't, I don't think anybody will think I'm crazy when I say this. These are probably some of the best visuals I've seen in a racing game in the past 10 years, aside from maybe something like Assetto Corsa or maybe some of the Forza games. Aside from that, the game has excellent feeling for the cars. The cars feel nice and weighted to the ground. The vehicles have the correct amount of wheel spin specific to the actual vehicle itself. You know, it doesn't feel like I'm driving an RC car around the big track. And not only that, the models for the game. The models have level of detail down to the knobs. It is very nice and for a fan of most of these vehicles, this comes as a huge plus for me. 
But with photorealistic knobs aside, let's move on to some of my negatives with the game. I mentioned previously that Gran Turismo Sport focused on an always online competitive racing. This is where some of my problems lie because of the fact that Sony being Sony added an always online feature to the game. This understandably was a point of contention for most fans. This also meant that the game would not save unless you were online. So for whatever reason you were offline, being that your internet was down or for whatever the range of reason that your internet might shut down, you weren't able to save. This was a feature that turned a lot of fans away from this game, not to mention on how when you're offline you can't play the campaign which includes one of the longtime staples of the game, driving school. It meaning that when you're offline you can't even learn to drive to play online. This was a big mistake on the part of Sony. Not to mention the agonizing amount of time it takes to get a substantial amount of credits to get a good car in the game. It is just downright uh, torture almost. Another one. Another problem that I had noticed, in some cases and more than others, is the way the game likes to advertise things to you. For example, when you want to purchase a new vehicle, you have to go to the brand central menu. There you'll find a number of cars to buy from from different manufacturers. And when you select a manufacturer, you can see the cars that they offer, but also you also see links that will take you to their website where you can also purchase real world items from their actual website. <clears throat> this is actually incorrect. You see, while making this video, I neglected the fact to do enough research on this, and that is why this mistake is here. What actually happens is, is that when you want to select a vehicle from an automotive manufacturer, you can go to their uh, page and then you can browse through the available cars they have. You won't be seeing any other ads for non-in-game items. I just want to clear this up now so there won't be any misconception in the comments and you get the wrong idea about the game. Please note this going forward. Um, I'll put this little image in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. When this image stops, you know that the mistake is over with and uh, you know that that part of the video has ended. I just didn't want to scrap this entire part of the video. Continuing on. Don't get me wrong, I don't mind product placement in video games to a certain extent. And especially in Gran Turismo. My goal is that each user everywhere can actually drive the car that you own or want to buy. Or just admire and will never be able to purchase. I don't have a car now, but the great thing about this game is you can try out lots of cars and decide what you want. It's a simulator for car buyers. So it would make sense that there's such a brand focus in these games. And last but not least, the lack of cars and tracks at launch. The game only coming with an anemic 168 cars and 29 tracks. Whereas in Gran Turismo 6, the game's predecessor, having a strapping 1,200 cars and vehicles to choose from and 30 tracks. Anyway, in conclusion, I still have hope for the series and I look forward to Gran Turismo 7. I just hope the developers, however unlikely, learn from their mistakes. And hopefully the next title will focus less on online specific features and more of a quality player experience.